Well, for instance, we lived in Water Street, and Water Street was just down from the town hall, which is where a lot of the dances were held. And um, so we only had to go up the street, and we were there, and we had this lady, an older sister of one of my friends, and she used to warn all the fellas in the street, don't be letting them sit like wallflowers, you're supposed to get up and dance with them. And she used to threaten them like <laughs> so this. But we said, well, when we go into the town hall, if nobody dances with us, we'll go into the cloakroom and sit there until we spy the land out again, you know. But usually some of the local fellas would dance with us. And then this rumour went around that there was a, a devil <laughs> following this band. Do you remember sure that, he, that he had a cloven clove foot? So, and he was supposed to be from so Belfast. <laughs> and anyway, and anybody good looking, with, and you'd look down, you'd come in, and there was a lot of commercial travellers, and that used to come to and you'd be looking down to see what his feet were like. <laughs> you see the cloven foot. <laughs> and, um, he was supposed to be following certain bands. <laughs> I don't know if CK was one of them. No, no. no other bands, but uh, Royal. the dances were absolutely great. We loved the show bands, and I mean, we used to follow them around. Get dressed up for the dances, basically, it was, you know, that was the fun of it all. And uh, my brother John was a fantastic dancer. He was a fantastic dancer. And in fact, Mary talked about, you know, going to the dances, and if you get a John and I would dance all night together. That was if he wasn't watching some bit of stuff that he wanted to take off. <laughs> and he used to say, oh, there's nobody here tonight, come on. And he taught me everything, and I st to this day, I really love dance. dance. I love really all really dance. Dance. Yeah, I was, really do, you know. My aunt Aggie, my, my, my father's sister, lived in Belfast, and her daughter was a professional ballroom dancer. And on the occasions that my aunt came to visit, she used to bring all these big ballroom dance, ballroom dresses with her. And we wouldn't use the dress, but we'd take the skirt from under it, because at that time you had the oh, big four or five petticoats <laughs> under, underneath the skirt, you know, and uh, flat shoes for dancing in. Mm. And that was the style at that time. And it was lovely. It was really lovely. You know, and you felt fantastic. You get dressed up was the important part oh, wow. of the dance, you know. And as I say, dresses. I my mother taught me to make dresses as well. I made a few dresses as well. You couldn't buy them, you know. Money wasn't there. Donald Blake's brought me back a lot because I remember we lived near Donald's at the back. Our backs were their backs, and in the summertime they would get a bus, a whole bus, and bring it up the back and put their mattresses and beds and, and book, it, everything they want to go away for the whole summer. They would rent a house in Bundoran and I always remember that when they went doing it, going it. And they would invite us sometimes during the summer to stay over with them at nights and everything to it. And it was an exciting time, like, you know. When we were children, first of all, the British Army arrived. So it was very straight forward and marching up and down the street and we couldn't play or anything like that so we hated them and then they moved out so it was great we had the street to ourselves again then one night we woke, um, we heard noises and the next thing we woke up and the yanks had arrived but they were so laid back you know and all the rest of it and they were very kind that the lots of sweets uh, and, and fruit we hadn't seen fruit for, for ages, for years, you see. So um, it was lovely to have them. And uh, so then they moved out. And then we got back to play in the Castle Barracks because that's where we all played. There was tar barrels there belonging to the council and that we used to ha go hiding in and out through them, you know. And um, then the people in Castle Street were wonderful. We were mixed, as I say, a mixed community. And uh, Laura Sanderson lived next to us. She'd be the grandmother of Keith Baker, you know, writer. And then Mrs. Pitcher lived across the road. Her husband was away at war, so I used to go and sleep with her. So both of us would kneel down at night to say our prayers. And then I'd have to say my extra prayer, prayer for the Pope. And then we said one for the Queen and the King. 
and uh, I just it was it was this lovely community, you know. You know there was a bit in it, and I didn't know it, but the bit about the hospital that Matron was supposed to have put the the people who were laying out rough down in the basement. I never knew that before, and uh, even after working in the hospital, but that she would take the ones who were laying rough and let them sleep down in the basement. And I thought, God, I didn't know that. But it was great to read that, you know, that mm-hmm. at that time they were doing something for them, you know. Oh, this it's, book has been marvellous to me because oh. all these people I more or less yes. knew. Everybody knew everybody in Inniskillen yeah. skill and then, like, you know. I mean, even looking at my own photograph when I was in the band, and then looking at the band and look at all the people that's in it and someone's dives and there's some sadness, some joy. But when we meet each other, like we're meeting here today and we yeah. meet after Mass and we go and meet for coffee and stuff like that, we're always talking about the good old days. I mean, yeah. maybe there were hard days and that, way, but they were lovely. We enjoyed it, we laughed and everything too. It was wonderful. Great you know? community. It was a wonderful community then, you know. No, there's no doubt about it. The, the boat is definitely... I, I think regenerated everybody, you know, and everybody's talking about it. It's fantastic. It really did me a power of good. The fact that, um, you know, going visiting sometimes with Mary, you know, my husband was only died not all that long ago, and so Mary would say, Will you come along and see Teddy or <laughs> whoever it was, you know? And it was great to be talking to them and to be sitting there, you know and knowing this was part of your life anyway, you know, so. And they're a great crowd of people. Now that I have written that wee story, mm. I must have a hundred yeah. stories that I yeah. think of. So Mary will be getting book that. Three, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Another book now. Uh, it was great. It was just wonderful. And Mary's um, coming to visit you was, was another mm. added advantage, you know. And then, the night of the launch was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I felt so proud mm. to have taken part in the book. This is just a glimpse into what gems are hidden among the pages of this book. They are real stories from real people, compiled together through love and determination, with one main objective to give people a unique insight into ultimately what was the rare old times. Ashlyn Hagen for Mana TV.